Welcome to this special historical documentary featuring the life and times of Andrew John Urban, farmer, math genius, devoted husband, loving father. Andy's got so many wonderful traits. He's, he's a very good husband, a very good friend, and he's been a great dad. Andy's story began June 20th, 1955 in Hayes, Kansas, the second born child of Walter and Irene Urban, and only boy amongst three sisters, Deb, Kim, and Mel. He grew up on the farm built by his father and went to school at Antonino Elementary in the small town of Antonino, just outside of Hayes. In Antonino, there is a Catholic church and a schoolhouse and a couple of houses. And that's where he went to school, in a one-room schoolhouse taught by nuns. Apparently, they had a wonderful cook at the school and that's one of his fondest memories was the food that this woman would make. In particular her sweet rolls. He really liked her sweet rolls. While he enjoyed his classmates and the cuisine served at his school, he more thoroughly enjoyed playtime in the pastures, throwing baseballs against barn walls, shooting hoops, and raising pigs. We did a lot together, um, kicking mom's high heels off on the swings. You were better at that than me. Um, walking the boards on the barn, that was always fun with um, the cousins. Uh, playing catch until we dropped the ball, that was usually me. And uh, I remember going out in the cold with the baby pigs being born. That's still your passion. Yes, raising pigs has always been a passion of Andy's, one he would never lose. I remember Dad always telling me stories about raising pigs and he'd get this twinkle in his eyes that it was one of the most special and magical things in the world to him was raising pigs. And he had so many different adventures, he would do so many different things, he would tell all these different stories about his life. But when he would talk about raising pigs, it was always something a little extra special. Like Dorothy had a dream to see the bigger world outside Kansas, Andy had an itch to travel to the Worldwide Church of God's British College in Bricketwood, England. After a good friend, Ron Wyland, came back and told him of the cozy pubs featured all around the campus, Andy was hooked. He worked his butt off shingling roofs and working at a grain elevator during wheat harvest until he could foot the bill to travel to England. and spend his first year of college there, where he enjoyed shooting hoops and throwing back pints at the Fox and Hounds pub. On this adventure, he was joined by Dan Graham, a man destined to become Andy's brother-in-law, married to his sister, Kim. You know, the Fox and Hounds and basketball, they seem to go hand in hand. Um, working the campus grounds and sometimes ending up on the attitude patch. <laughs> Uh, making candles in one of the studies late at night, drinking bourbon and whiskey. Um, uh, I still have to learn to like that stuff. Uh, collecting trash in the dumpsters. To me, that was so much fun. I don't know if you liked it that much, but I did. And then escaping to Watford St. Albans in London and then trying to sneak back on the campus um, through Drop Lane uh, without getting caught, although we did. And you know, we got in trouble. We know those times. And then the crazy foreign people like Burnt and the quirkiness of Jerry Johnson and stories about his sister Simone. So um, that's basically how we met. The two would play basketball till late at night, sneak off campus, enjoy a pint and a cheese sandwich before sneaking back onto school grounds to avoid any trouble from faculty officials, even if that meant throwing Dan in a ditch to hide. We met at Brickett Wood. Um, and I remember you coming into the gymnasium with Dan Graham. And one of the fun trips, uh, uh, fun uh, memories I had was actually pretending to pull a rope across the uh, road after a um, trip to the uh, uh, Fox and Hounds and uh, cars screaming to a halt thinking we actually did have a rope across the road. So that was a kind of a stupid thing to do, but of course we weren't in a, a right state of mind at the time. That year was a year of great adventure, but his first year there was the school's last year in operation. It closed after his second semester. Little did he know at the time that the school's closing would send him somewhere he didn't expect, allowing him to meet the woman of his dreams. Still with aspirations of living far from home, 
he attended another Worldwide Church of God campus, this time in Pasadena, California. Had my first whiskey with you. You were there to change tires for me. We went bowling all the time. I wore your shoes at the bowling alley one day because I didn't have my shoes with me. Always fun times then. In class one day, he saw a woman who instantly stole his heart, Jennifer Pearson from Miami, Florida. I guess they didn't have very many people show up for the dance. So someone was calling around to all the dorms to see if they could get some more people to come. So some friends and I decided we would go down and I wasn't feeling very well. I was coming down with a cold. And we went down to the dance and we were there for a while and I was getting ready to, to leave. And I was about to put my coat on and all of a sudden I see this guy come after me and say, hey, would you like to dance? And I came to find out later that he was actually in the middle of a dance with another girl. And he didn't want to miss out on the opportunity to get to know me, so he left her on the dance floor and came after me to ask if I wanted to dance with him. And from that time on, we just hit it off and we've been together since. And the two fell in love. Not long later, they married and graduated college as married students. Taking his bride back home, he ventured back into his childhood passion, the glorious life of raising pigs. One of my favorite uh, memories that Dad's told me throughout the years is uh, he has many about his pigs in the past, but uh, one in particular about that white pig that used to jump over fences. And as a little kid, I just thought it was really funny that I never expected to see pigs jump, especially that high over those fences that he used to build. And I just, I just loved hearing that story. Jenny, out of love for her husband, went right along and enjoyed the ride. At least until they realized the business wasn't quite as lucrative, nor living in a small trailer quite as lavish as they hoped for. Your memory, your ability to remember facts about everything, especially baseball. And we used to talk about that because you could remember statistics from years ago. And then also your ability to deal with numbers, which I was never really that good at. I needed my calculator, <laughs> but you could do it in your head. Putting his wizardry skills of mathematics to work, Andy found employment back in California at Northrop Corporations, then at JPL. I think the first time we met was at a baseball game where you came uh, with your whole family and uh, we played baseball. And shortly after that, you started working at JPL. and. Um, I thought, man, this is going to be fun to work with this guy, and I was right. Though they had a few cats, such as Shrinky, Shorty, and Izzy Beast, after eight years of marriage, Andy and Jenny knew their family lacked something. That's when they decided to have their firstborn son, Cody W. Discovering cheaper housing prices in an expanding Antelope Valley, they moved to Lancaster into a house that would be their family home for over 20 years. Their first upgrade to the home was an addition to the family, their second son, Brett Joseph. Hey, a watch. A watch. A new watch. Married life with him has been an adventure. And we had two wonderful boys. And in fact, at some point, I think it was at 26 years, we actually renewed our vows. So something must be working right between us that we would get married all over again to each other. Taking good care of his family, they added a pool, spa, balcony, and a number of other features to the property. It's actually been 25 years that we know each other. We met at Sharkey's, and those are some of the fond memories I've got where you and I would get together, stay there until the place closed, have the pickled eggs, and and uh, have some great pool games, drink some beer. It was just uh, a lot of fun. Feeling the need to move on from JPL, Andy accepted an offer made by his brother-in-law, Fred Eastman, to come and manage the Greenhouse Cafe in Saugus. I think I was thinking to myself, what is such a smart guy doing here with a bunch of knuckleheads like us? <laughs> <laughs> there he proved what true work ethic looks like by putting in long hours, leading the restaurant for the better, assembling an ace crew, and building popular esteem within the community. My first impression of Andy is this guy is so intimidating, I'm scared to death of him. <laughs> that was my first impression. Up until halfway I knew you, and then I realized 
that you're awesome. Your willingness to put in all that effort with Greenhouse, uh, making that store a successful place for a long time. I really appreciated it and uh, just wanted you to know that. Andy was the type of boss never above any job, always leading from the front, setting the example. This was the proving ground where his sons Cody and Brett gleaned countless life lessons in work ethic and job skills. Dad has always impressed me with his work ethic. He's always been the hardest worker I've ever known. And I'm so grateful that he, he instilled that in his sons and Brett and I by taking us along with him to the Greenhouse Cafe. Another thing that meant so much about that is that he took time out of his busy schedule and brought us along, that we would get times together driving on Bouquet Canyon. It's about almost an hour each way. And we would chat, we would talk about who knows what, we would listen to Bill Engvall CDs. We'd have a great time. It was a way for dad to spend time with his sons in the midst of his busy schedule. And it always meant so much to me. I'm just enthralled with this man that he surprises me every day, something new, something different. He, he always makes me laugh, and he's always there for me when I need him. And when I think about our wedding vows, he sure has lived up to those. Um, he stuck by me through time when I was really suffering with fibromyalgia, and he was always there for me, very attentive, very caring concerned and I appreciate that so much. Over the years his children grew. Andy got to be involved in their athletic sports, help them with homework, play card and board games with them such as London Game, teach them finances through allowances that featured rare coins and bills, and take them on family expeditions, most notably returning to one of his favorite places in the world, England. Andy and Jenny raised their two boys, daily exhausting the supplies of love in their hearts. But as Andy would always say, tomorrow is another day. Another day to grow even a little more love for his boys. One of my favorite childhood memories of dad is uh, when I was on the swim team and he was always so excited and to see me swim and he just the encouragement that he would give me and just the helpful tips he would give me and it just it, I, it, I really appreciated him showing up and being there for every swim meet and it just meant a lot to me and it was just it was so great to have him there cheering me on and always there in my lane timing me too and it was just a really special feeling to have him there supporting me through all of that. He got to see them through high school graduation, college graduation, and the marriage of Cody to his bride Heather. Knowing and, and seeing you be the most generous and kind um, person where you always are putting other people before you. You are always asking other people if they need something, if they want something. Um, and even when they tell you no, and they still have that little, you know, hint glistening in their eye of they might actually want something, you wait for that and you um, make sure that that is satisfied and I find that just an incredible trait that you have and something I highly respect. Cody and Heather later made Andy a grandpa with the birth of their son Lysander Luke. Feeling an empty nest and burnt out on captaining the Greenhouse Cafe, Andy and Jenny packed up and decided it was time to head back home. With his parents farm empty, a troop of family and friends escorted Andy on his triumphant return to Hayes, Kansas, where he stocks vending machines and lives his lifelong childhood dream once more, raising pigs. And we all loaded up all the vehicles and we had a convoy. And Andy was at the head and I was at the tail. And we got to drive all these cool cars and swap the Mustang out and different vehicles and go back to Kansas. And then when we got back there, I remember an evening uh, where Andy and I spent a long time out on the truck, knocking down a few, whatever we were drinking, and watching a thunderstorm in the distance. And it was a great bonding moment, 
I had a really great time with Andy. The hardest part about that whole move was being so far away from our boys. And and I think he feels the same thing. He We miss him so much. And it's been quite an adventure back here too. Um, life is so much different. It's slower. Um, we've become even closer if that was possible because basically it's just us that we're the only ones we have so we are each other's best friend and he's a wonderful friend he's very honest he's very fair and he is such a hard worker when we moved back here um, he just worked so hard to get the farm cleaned up and straightened up and ready for him to start his hobby uh, which is raising some pigs and he's he works so hard every day at that you'd be surprised how much hard work is involved the kind of person you are I think is a very passionate person you're passionate about your your two boys Jenny and now your grandson you're passionate about your pigs. I think you that's just something you've always wanted to do and I'm glad you're doing it. Life may not be easy, but he is happy. He has traveled the world, raised a family, and proved he meant his wedding vows and sticking with Jenny through better and worse. I feel like I've grown to become a, such a better person because I've known you. I feel like um, you're definitely a second father to me, of course, and I have learned a lot from you. Um, determination and hard work on top of being extremely kind and putting other people before you are some things that I've learned from you and I'm just I'm so grateful that you're my father-in-law because I get to raise my son with a grandpa like you so thanks for being awesome I want to be as hard as worker as Andy Andy I always compare your work ethic to everything because you were the hardest worker I think I've ever known and you still are and so i always want to live up to that and so you just were a really hard worker and i admire that a lasting impression um this is uh, maybe not exactly what you wanted to hear but uh, um, was actually um, i was amazed about the size of andy's feet and also how flat they were you've been a good role model to me you've always been there for me when I needed you and I still feel that way if I called you up today and I needed you you'd be there and that's that's a wonderful thing another thing about you is you tend to do little weird quirky things that <laughs> that are silly but they let you know that you're you love the person um, silly things like you come over and put your pool stick on my foot as if that's normal <laughs> you know we were friends and then we were family and then we were no longer family and then uh, but we have always remained friends and it's you know you're more like a brother to me now and um, and you were always sentimental and I could always count on you to be that way and you're, you're always like that and, and that is so comforting to have, have that sameness. Uh, so it doesn't mean everything else is the same but you can always be counted on to be sentimental so that's a good thing. You were there at the right time and you were there for the right reason. I'm a firm believer that God put you there because I needed a guiding hand and I think you were the best guiding hand in my life because you were the one that pointed the way. And today I can proudly say that I'm a dad and I'm married to a wonderful lady. Um, you know, I'm, not, I'm never gonna be able to thank you enough for that, for the guiding hand, for, for, for you know, telling me, hey man, go for it. You know, uh, this is the, the lady for you. When I married John, I was looking for somebody like you. Somebody like you, just a good man like you. And I think you're really like one of the best people I know. Mm -hmm. Really, seriously. And um, so that's a lasting impact for me because I chose somebody like you. I just want to say that I really love you and I just think you're a great person. You're got really an honest person. 
except I'm quite um, perturbed sometimes. I think maybe you might cheat at cards, but I'm not <laughs> sure about that. But I haven't been able to prove it yet. But sometimes I think you get pretty slick about those cards. And you're a fantastic game player. The true measure of a, of a person is often found in their legacy. And Andy's legacy is incredible. He's got two great sons. He's got a wonderful grandson. And that legacy is going to say something about Andy and his character for the rest of his life and for generations to come. And what it says is that he was a fair-minded man who had principles and values that far exceeded the average man. And he had a belief system that will go on for generations and make the world a better place. The kind of man Dad is, is probably one of the hardest working men I've ever met in my life. He, whether it was from working at the Greenhouse Cafe and then coming home and taking care of stuff around the house with the garden that we used to have, and now with raising pigs and running the route, he is always on the go, always doing something. And I feel like that's taught me a lot in my life, it's my work ethic, and it's just, it's helped me out a lot. And I really appreciate Dad for being such a hard worker throughout his entire life and teaching me and Cody that. Uh, being a hard worker pays off and it's, it's just a great thing. Aside from being my biological father, the lasting legacy of Andy Urban on my life is that he is my hero. I look up to him so much. He is the man that I measure my life by. And if I can make him proud, I will know I lived a life worthy of being his son. If I can make him proud and put a smile on his face, then I am honored. I am honored to know that I am his son and that he has taught me so much on how to be a man, how to be a husband, how to be a father, how to be brave and courageous, how to take risks, how to pursue your dreams, and how to be an all around just good person. I thank my dad for that. Now looking back on 60 years of amazing adventures, he lives happily looking forward to many more, especially growing old with his college sweetheart. Andy, I just wanna say that I love you very much and every day I love you even more. Just like you always said with the boys, tomorrow's another day and the love just keeps growing. And as you reach 60, I look forward to what the next 60 years has. Who knows how long we'll be here, but I would spend another 60 years with you. I love you. You've been a great husband and a great friend. And I don't know what I would do without you. So happy birthday, bud. I love you. Andy Urban, this is your life. <laughs>